Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello and welcome. Um, hopefully, as you can tell uh, from the title of the video, this is going to be a rip-roaring rumpus. I like it. Through some um, fuzzes. Partially to tell the story, a little history of fuzz, kinda, but also to take a look at some weirdy beardy boutique stuff that we don't often get the chance to see. First, some housekeeping. Weirdy beardy. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. It's what helps us uh, keep going. And also, uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Yes, thank you to you. If you are a TPS patron, uh, patreon.com slash thatpedalshow, uh, you can listen to the VCQ, which we do on Monday, the comments and questions, live comments and questions as a podcast. Plus, we do monthly giveaways. Indeed. Um, Let us begin. Buying all you need is fuzz shirt from that pedal show store. Yes. I'm about to we'll either disprove or prove that <laughs> by the end of today's show. Okay, Michael, where to for begin? Minimal talking today. We'll try and put up relevant uh, information on the screen as each pedal is being played. Maybe we'll explain a little bit, but um, we, we're we kind of going to sort of run through the early history of fuzz. We're going to take in some tone benders. We're going to take in some zonk machines. We're going to take in fuzz faces. We're going to take in muffs. And we're going to take in some octafuzz. A couple of other little things along the way, which isn't the whole history of fuzz, but it is kind of... Uh, might help you decide the kind of thing you might want to go for. Yeah. Um, we have a Marshall 50 Watt Plexi and the Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature. Both are set on the edge. A little bit, a little bit lovely. Dan, I'll give you a bit with the telly just to show you how it's sounding. Not heavy overdrive, but just going in, and humbuckers will do this. End of the show, I reckon. <laughs> just let's, thanks for watching. See you next week. See you next week. Both amps are overdriving a bit. Man, that is a remarkable sound. Isn't it? It really is. <laughs> it really is. Okay, first up is Seeker uh, Electric Effects. Seeker um, make all kinds of really nice. Mike, the guy's name is, uh, make really, really lovely fuzz pedals. The vast majority of stuff you see today is kind of batch released, essentially one offs. Yeah in the main using NOS components, so stuff that's hard to come by. So what tends to happen, not always, not in every case, but what tends to happen is the maker will get enough parts to make a batch of stuff, they'll make them, they'll sell them, and then that might be that for a minute. Yeah. Some of this stuff is available, some of this stuff is less available. Don't beat us up about that. Please check out the links below and see what is and what isn't. I think we should also show the good people some gut shots as well. It is truly remarkable the skill that goes into building these effects. Uh, just the lengths they go to to find some of these components is remarkable. Yeah. But oh. they are beautiful. They're so beautifully made. And we should say thanks to Marcus Reeves, who is an exemplar of this uh, amazing boutique approach to building. Knight's exemplar. Uh, what? Knight's exemplar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> who, um, who supplied all of this uh, stuff for us today. Bless him, stuff that we just wouldn't necessarily be able to get hold of. Yeah. So thanks, Marcus. Yes, indeed. And, uh, there will be his Zoe Zonk machine in today's show accordingly. Right, Seeker. Uh, Mike uh, of Seeker Electric Effects make lovely handmade stuff. Fast forwarding to Mark One Tone Bender. Indeed. Arguably, after the old um, FZ1 Maestro Fuzz Tone. Yes. Famous Satisfaction. Uh, Rolling Stones, you know all about that. It kick-started the whole fuzz story. Came across the uh, channel, uh, came across the Atlantic to the UK. Yes. And then became Tone Benders, Fuzz Faces. And off we off we run. Mark 1 Tone Bender. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Three transistor fuzz. Three transistor fuzz. So there's a, um, a basic, very basic buffer at the front of it. 
with the first transistor. So you heard it over the intro with Dan's telly. Let's see what it does with the old Lester. <laughs> Caving. Amazing. Caving. Yep. Next, Charlie Pedal's Troubadour, also a uh, quite a faithful Mark I tone bender recreation. Yeah. Also in the wedge, you've had a look inside this. Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> Super spitty. What I liked about that, there was a bit more top end coming through. It wasn't yep. caving in as such. A little much. bit louder. A little bit louder. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like it's a combination of the, the bias seems a bit more starved because it was spittier. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Next, R2R Electric. Uh, Mark II Super Fuzz. So essentially, we've moved forward now in the tone bender history a little bit to a Mark II status, extra control, uh, still three transistors. Mm -hmm. In this case, they're germaniums. Um, let's have a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, yeah, the Mark II, it's just more controlled. There's there's a wider range with the attack. Like on the Mark I, it's like the attack barely made any difference until it was like, you know, right off. There's just a, I don't know, this just seems like a more controlled, yeah. fatter thing. That's special. Yeah, it's amazing. Next, our lovely friend Adrian Thorpe, MBE. Sir Adrian. He's not sir. He's no, not sir. He's sir to me. <laughs> the Boneyard. This is super interesting. Uh, it's two in one, right? Kind of. Well, kind of. It's even more than that. It it enables you to go through lots of different versions. So Of a tone bender. Of a tone bender. So if you think about uh, you've got the Mark I, which is a low voltage, like you know, three volts in that circuit. Mark II, up the voltage. Mark 1.5 two transistors instead of three, which is more akin to the uh, fuzz, fuzz face. face. Mark 1.5 kind of birthed the fuzz face. Yeah. Basically. And this gives you the option of going switching between two transistors and three transistors and yeah. also using the feed control goes through from low voltage up to high voltage. So it enables you to sort of go through the all of the shenanigans. We think we've got it in the two transistor mode. It should be fairly obvious because when you go into the other the mode switch there, it should get a lot fuzz fuzzier. Yeah, a lot more fuzzier. Right? the other switch do it bypasses the tone circuit okay and is this the tone circuit yes nice uh you heard hopefully quite clearly 
changing that voltage, which is this control here, had massive effect on the general headroom and sound of it yeah. in general. <laughs> silliness should be had. That is remarkable. So one of the remarkable things was you heard I was turned down on the Leicester there in the two transistor mode and it cleaned up really lovely. Mm -hmm. Flick it to the three transistor mode, which is what he did. Cleanup's all gone. Yeah. Back to glorious first. That is spectacular. Incredible. Because the voltage control, yes. the tone control, and two or three just enables you to get it sat. Yeah. No matter what guitar amp you're using, that you can find a real tone bender yeah. sound with that. It's amazing. What I love about that is the other stuff we've heard is is amazing and completely brilliant and all boutique -y and you know made by elves in forests with large beards and drinking potions. <laughs> Sorry to Charlie and Mike. <laughs> I don't know if you do drink potions, but your pedals sound like you do. Um, off the peg. Production. Yeah. Machine. Yeah. It's Thorpey production, so it's not like he's making thousands of them. And still, this, but still, you have a hope of getting this. Still limited by component of Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I probably just said all that and they probably sold out a million years ago and you can't get them anymore. <laughs> anyway, next. Next. Okay, pedal porn uh, CV7003, I think is the correct number. Right. Yeah, which is a like a mil spec germanium transistor. We made mention of the fact that the Tone Bender Mark 1.5 sort of birthed the fuzz face. The fuzz face went on to be the famous two transistor fuzz pedal, made obviously famous by Jimi Hendrix among others, but principally by Hendrix. We'll look at one in a minute that's got silicon and germanium transistors. Mm -hmm. The early ones. Um, were germanium, the later ones were silicon for all kinds of reasons we won't go into. Um, let's have a listen to this then. Uh, and Chris and the guys at Pedal Porn, thanks so much for this. <laughs> it says TPS in the... Uh, on the LED. On the LED there. Um, I'll play a bit on the Leicester, but then I'm going to pick up a strap for the Fuzz Fi because it seems, seems to make sense. <laughs>
Rarely do I enjoy a fuzz face as much as that. That was incredible. Okay, um, E flat strap of the appropriate period. This is a 70. So slightly a bit more gated. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of goes into that gate, slightly spitty. Yeah. But it's got the the cleanup on it is unreal. It's nice. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice I just knocked the fuzz back from patent pending to almost patent pending. Beautiful. Uh nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's stay in fuzz face territory next. True Fi, Two Face. Mm. I think this is I think this is new from Teddy, uh, because it came very recently. Interesting because the last uh, fuzz face type, we should say Tone Bender is, you know, a trademark that's owned by Macari, so they only make Tone Benders, really. Fuzz face is a, is a trademark owned by Jim Dunlop Corporation, so we're using these as generic descriptors rather than saying that's what they actually are. Yeah. Uh, with respect to those trademark owners, um, it's a fuzz face type. <clears throat> it has... Silicon and germanium transistors. Very so I think the switch clever. says 69 and 70. 69 being the germanium, 70 being the silicon. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see them side by side yep. in this. Yeah. What's also pretty cool about this, you've got a bias control on the top that controls the uh, voltage across the transistors, basically, which if you have less voltage, they get spittier. Yes, but only for the germaniums, right? So the bias is fixed for the... Yes, the for the silicon. Correct. Well remembered, Dan. But the other thing, which is one of my favourite features on uh, a fuzz phi type uh, <laughs> circuit, is th the input variable input resistance. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the things that I love on my analog man. Uh, Fuzz. Yeah, it helps you tune it to different guitars, but it also, if you want to run it after a wah wah, for example, it can help a little bit just sort out that problem between those two pedals. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, we'll we'll stick where we were then. Daniel in Stratocaster land.
That's outrageous. I need a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Um, I might be pregnant. Yeah, I think I am. Okay. Uh, play the telly. We'll come back to it. You want to start in uh, silicon or germanium? Uh, I'll start in silicon, actually, and we'll go, go, yeah, go back. I'll go back. Interesting how there was so much extra high end there. When you went to the silicon, so silicon on the mm. on the mm, mm, mm. Mm. okay. fuzz back a bit okay just because what's quite interesting is if it feels like it might do quite a good overdrive distortion yeah yeah let yeah, me yeah. knock the fuzz back and the the input level is all also knocked back a bit just see what happens just see what happens it may <laughs> the park teddy man that's pretty special yeah it really is didn't do what i thought it was going to do uh, as as you knock the uh fuzz back on the fuzz control i thought it might stay bright but it doesn't sure so what was happening was when we were in the silicon mode especially once you get up to the top ranges of the fuzz control the amount of brightness coming through was was very special yeah wow super tweakable yeah really really gorgeous i mean off the off the bat i would say that is the most tweakable traditional sounding fuzz face I've come across yet. A lot of times when you make them that tweakable, you lose yeah. something, you know, there's, there's a compromise, but that seems to obviously, retain all the awesome stuff. It really does. Obviously, Analog Man's sun face needs to be mentioned in that breath because yeah. that's what Analog Man did for that whole circuit. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Right, before we uh, dive into other fuzz territory, Remember we said that the, the Mark 1, Mark 2 tone benders were three transistor fuzzes. Uh, the Mark 1.5 tone bender and the fuzz face are two transistor fuzzes. Not quite the same thing at all, but if we move back to one transistor. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Next. Now then, Dan, certainly a one transistor pedal design based on something very famous couldn't sound any good, could it? Thank you. 
Unreal. And Dan, what kind of effect is that? Oh, it's, well, it's, shall we say, Range Master. So I can't think of any clever way to say it. It's a treble booster. It's a treble booster. Yeah, yeah, treble booster. So, <laughs> very clever. Uh, Joe from Hello Sailor Effects. We haven't we haven't said that yet, so let's yeah. say that. Joe, um, far up, man. <laughs> the knob on the right-hand side yeah. is... A blend, it blends in an audio transformer so that if you put it in a buffered signal, you can still use it. Oh, no way. Yeah. So it's not just a Range Master clone. Then. Oh, no, no, some, no. Some no. other stuff. I've got to say, I've never heard a Range Master I like as much as that, with all due respect to Range Masters. Yeah. Switches between two separate uh, uh, transistors. Um, Dallas Arbiter Range Master, made famous by uh, Brian May, Rory Gallagher, uh, etc. I might have to make some space. <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. It's amazing. That's pretty, yeah. pretty spectacular. So what it was doing there, obviously, yes, the pedal is creating much of that, but it's pushing the amps into more overdrive. It's hammering the front end of the amps. It's making them go into the glorious noise that, that you heard. I am alive. Unreal. Happy days. Happy days indeed. <laughs> All right, next. Back to Mike at Seeker then. Um, so we've said... Maestro F said one comes along, which we didn't have here today. It it essentially spawns the tone bender, which is one thing, which essentially spawns the fuzz face, which is another thing. And in in that we discuss the treble booster. Mm -hmm. 
because it's, a, well, it, it, it's in the same family, albeit not the same thing. Lots of other things then happened. The next kind of groundbreaking, world-changing fuzz mm -hmm. was arguably the Electroharmonics Big Muff. Yeah. Arguably. Arguably. Different because, so now we're onto three transistors and a different kind of design. Yeah. Well, the, the Big Muff is basically cascading gain stages, giving you sort of basically distortion into distortion, giving a smoother response, you know, without the fizziness. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, massive big bottom end. Yeah, made played by so, so, so many people down the years. Lots of different types of Big Muff down the years. Uh, Dan's one of Dan's favorites is the early Triangle. Yeah, Triangle one. Big Muff, and the Ram's Head Big Muff, and the cetera, Civil War Big Muff, Russian Big Muff. The list is endless. This is a take on a Russian Big Muff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. With uh, the mid range mod. Oh, the hoof mod. The hoof mod, because yes. one thing about Big Muffs is they can be kind of scoopy in yeah. the mid range. Yeah. Uh, let us try it, Dan. As a Big Muff fan, Dan? Exceptional. Exceptional. <laughs> Exceptional. There's one thing I will try after you do that, which is a test that I always do for a Big Muff. You do the left okay. quarter. I think the left one is volume, the right one is sustain, and the middle one is tone, I think, I'm guessing. Okay. Seems okay. seems to be that way. And then the pot on the left-hand side there, as you look at pedal cam, is the mid, the mids in. Okay. Um, while I'm playing down, put the mids all the way out and all the way in. Okay. And you can really hear what it does. You probably heard it while Dan was playing, but anyway. <laughs> Well known for not cleaning up very well. Sure. So I tried to demonstrate that. But one thing that's really ace about Big Muffs is they seem to keep the definition on the low end yeah. where a lot of fuzz faces and tone benders Just become mushy, which is part of their awesome appeal yeah. and is lovely if you want it. If you don't want it, Big Muffs are going to suit you much better if you want to keep that definition yeah. in the low strings, but still fat and woolly and fuzzy. I want to try one thing. If 
I may say. So I, an acid test for me on the quality of Big Muffs is how they sound in the lower gain ranges. Okay. Can I, 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 the labels, the controls aren't marked. I'm assuming the one on the right is sustained. Yes. Beautiful. So a good big muff gets that vocal quality with the gain down is still dynamic. Yeah. Magic. Really magic. Presumably some of that gain in there is already set then because it's all set. it never gets low it's, gain. Absolutely. It's never low gain. It's like with the with the gain turned all the way down, it's still it's never clean. Yeah. Um but Yeah, if you want to clean up big muff, not for you. Exactly. But so many big muffs are set. So that the sweet spot is in the the really woolly mm. area. We should also say that Big Muff is a trademark of the Electro Harmonics Company, uh, Mike Matthews and all the lovely people there, having done so much great things for guitar effects over the years. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, so yeah, please don't get angry about the use of the term, Mike. Yes. Um, so call it large. No, no. Uh, something else. Yes, it's inspired by that circuit. Uh, okay, next. Marcus Reeves Zoe. Tone bender happens, goes off in all directions. All directions. One of the directions it ends up in is in Garforth in Leeds, near Leeds in the United Kingdom, uh, in a device called the Zonk Machine, which is essentially a modified tone bender. Mm -hmm. They vary greatly down the years. I came to know Zonk Machines largely through Doyle Bramall. Right. Elements of fuzz facey type fuzz, thick, fat fuzz, but also a bit more honking mids, yeah. typically. And in some of them, by no means all, a little bit of an octave quality. Yes. Nice. So you can read about Zonk Machines and maybe watch some of our old videos uh, that might go into a bit more detail than that. But this is Marcus's take on a Zonk. Um, you'll see from the cutaways the crazy attention to detail unbelievable he goes to we've extolled Mar marcus's virtues many times so what do we have here then uh yeah well two controls on a switch done <laughs> Thank you. 
So really gated and spitty on that side of the switch. <laughs> That is crazy. He needs to put that switch on a separate foot switch because I'll be kicking that in. That's remarkable. Cool. Tell you a couple of things I like about it. So uh, in your fuzz fight and your um, tone benders, sometimes finding that optimum blend of crapped out woolly mm. fuzzy bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, it's curry for tea tonight. Um, but it, the high end it retains. It, the high end is, is everything. And when you turn it down. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Really amazing. Love really that. amazing. Uh, I nice. wasn't hearing much over octave. I think Marcus said he... There was, no, there was a bit there. There was a bit there on the strat up at the 
12th thread as you're in that pickup. The fuzz gods are angry, Dan. They are indeed. They are indeed. Uh, it's thundering uh, outside. Cool. Okay. Next. Um, sorry. What? I was just going to say something really stupid about the fuzz gods. <laughs> they, they don't appreciate all the innuendos. Next. <laughs> okay, for those of you who are regular TPS viewers and are literally gritting your teeth through this whole episode because you don't like fuzz, uh, thanks for being with us. Indeed. <laughs> the good news is there's only two more to go. Actually, two and a bit more to go. The last two we're going to talk about sort of tangents of the fuzz world in a way. Um, not that I wish to denigrate anything to a tangent, but things that aren't tone benders, uh, muffs and fuzz fi, which are kind of the things we sort of think of Sure. First, generally. Um, I didn't know about this. Yeah. Harmonic Percolator? The harmonic Percolator. By... I, I, in Interfax? Interfax. Interfax. Yeah. Those of you who love this kind of effect will currently be throwing things at the screen as the gods of fuzz are throwing things from the sky yeah. onto the roof. Remember when fax was a big thing? Yeah. It's Interfax. Yeah, you still have to... Yeah, not them. No. Not that kind of fax. No. Um, uh, and a different kind of design. Yeah. Do you know anything about it? Very little. Okay, good. Uh, I do know it uses a, a PMP and an NPN transistor. Ah. And, um, and um, yep. <laughs> and uh, lets all of the even harmonics through and creates a very unique mm. Isn't thing. it some combination of even and odd? And even order and odd order harmonics that make... Anyway, we'll just stop. Steve Albini was... Steve Albini, yeah. yes, loves it. If you go on YouTube, there's many videos of Steve saying, I love this. By all means, uh, write the history of it in the comments section. Um, land devices, we like everything they make. Unreal. Unreal. Um, again, basically rock and roll shit, <laughs> isn't it? You've got to... You go on the website, it's like... and. <laughs> You just wait until things become available. Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't matter what it is, you just yeah. grab it. Um, okay, I'll try a different couple of different guitars. The switch on it, what does the switch do? It turns the... Uh, uh, clipping. Clipping circuit off. So the left is 70s, to the right is destruction. So we'll... Fantastic. We'll start. <laughs> we'll start normally. Okay. on a bike. That's <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> Thank you. 
I actually dribbled a little bit. I was like, <laughs> oh, God. interesting elements of all the things we like about fuzz yeah so plenty fuzzy yes but also in some settings feels more like a distortion device yeah. than fuzz yeah and I, actually i think they call it a distortion device but it where well, you get that there are there are elements of that total crap out but yeah but it never loses definition like rarely yeah. yeah when you you can still dig in there's still there's still front of the note I that's extraordinary. Yeah, I've never played one. I, I, wow! You know there are there are styles and approaches we associate with fuzz, in general. I'm I'm hearing a whole different sort of slice of the music world in that. Yeah, you know even our mate Paul Stacey, I can hear him loving that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, hear him loving that in a rock and roll context. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> boy, oh boy. Okay. Next. Next. Okay, huge love to Nick Greer. Oh, who, man. Who we see when we're in the States at, at, at shows and sometimes in Europe. Probably in the States. Um, Super Hornet. Now, this is one of many takes on Octave Fuzz. Uh, made famous initially by Hendrix, I guess, with the Octavia. That's one way of doing it. One of my favourites is the Prescription Electronics. I'll go. Yeah, clean octave blend. Yes. But uh, I have a Mythos version called the Argo, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. Again, loved by Dor Bramwell. This is another take on it, um, which has a momentary switch for the octave. Oh, really? If you want it. It's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Schwangy, Daniel. Oh, Schwangy in Schwangy <laughs> world. <laughs> Shakespearean pedal show. Ye olde Shakespearean pedal show. Forsooth, Schwangy. <laughs> to sway or not to sway? Thank you. 
unconventional use thereof. Just love Nick and everything he does, and that is absolutely no exception. What a wonderful sounding thing. Yeah, just, just to finish it off, because you might associate a bit more with this. Beautiful. Yeah, amazing. It's funny with Octave Fuzz because sometimes you hear it in isolation like that, you're like, whoa, yeah. that sounds like my teeth are going to fall out. It's one of those things whenever we play and, you know, we're seven or eight songs in and everyone's heard the guitars. <laughs> everyone's heard and then, lick, you know. And then Nick will step on that and it's like, oh, there's something. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's just like, it's such a brilliant thing to have just to throw in the middle, just a, a different dynamic. When you just want to lift it up yeah. a little bit more, ah, oh, man. And the people in the audience go, I must go to the dentist. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> nice one, Nick. Okay. Um, Whistle Stop Tour of some really interesting and different fuzzes that represent some of the best examples of those pillars. Yeah, those we, classics. We did a show a couple of years ago with some more cost-effective options in that market to these different kind of pillars of fuzz. This is deliberately esoteric, deliberately yeah. the best of the best. And if you're, if you're there screaming at the screen saying, but there's no way we can never get these, you know, unobtainium, don't worry, we already have them. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> oh. um, no, get on Reverb, get on eBay. Yeah, yeah. Email the manufacturers if you want them. You know, sometimes good things come to those who wait. And uh, Or if you think that all sounds like a pile of garbage, I'm really pleased I can't get one. That's there you go. Too. Very good. Um, okay, so we say thank you to our preferred retailers. You can see the links in the, in the description below. We say please go to that pedal show store and buy merch. Look, this one says fuzz on it. It's all you need. And a couple of belting <laughs> amps and some nice guitars and uh, a room you can play really loud in. Apart from that, fuzz is all you need. <laughs> Please go to patreon.com slash that pedal show if you want to get be a part of that. Uh, and what else, Dan? What have I missed? Uh, for our friends in America, we have vetpedalshop.com. Indeed. Where you can get none of this. Probably literally none of this. Uh, you might be able to get some Greer stuff, actually. Yeah, and maybe the Thorpey. Maybe the thought. Yeah. Yeah. So some of it. So Definitely some of it. Some of it. Yeah. We're going to leave you um, with a pedal that Marcus Reeves rehoused. So it's oh. in a Reeves box. Okay. It's 20 years old. You definitely can't get it anymore. And it was called the Langtronics Bone Collector. Well, say cheerio. I'm just going to plug it in and I'm going to let Dan explore the delights of the Bone Collector. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Still. We'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye. Thank you.